Hello to all the passive income investors looking at Chevron and ExxonMobil as potential dividend stocks to buy to generate passive income. Now, I'll compare these two dividend stocks across several critical financial metrics, including their dividend yield and valuation. I'll also consider the price of crude oil when making this comparison. And finally, answer which one I think is the better dividend stock to buy today. So let's jump right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so let's start with the price of crude oil, which as of this recording, trading at $85.45. You can see the price fluctuating recently, jumping back higher after increasing tensions in the Middle East. Of course, over the weekend, Iran launched missiles into Israel, and that could increase tensions in the region further. Whenever there's an increase in tension in the Middle East, that tends to lift price of crude oil. Now, that's a major oil producing region. Therefore, the increasing tensions suggest that maybe production of crude oil might be restrained. So for that reason, the price tends to increase when there's tension. Now, in terms of looking at these two companies and their dividend yield, Chevron has the better dividend yield at 3.88% compared to ExxonMobil at a dividend yield of 3.09%. But when I'm looking at dividend stocks, I'm more interested in the dividend potential for the next 10 years or 20 years or 5 years at the very least. Instead of the near-term dividend yield, I do consider the dividend yield, but I'm more interested in the potential. Can these companies increase their dividend payment over the next five years? Is the dividend I'm receiving today going to be the same as the dividend I'm receiving five years from now? That's not very attractive for me. I'm looking at stocks I could buy today that have a certain dividend today, but that's going to be much higher five years from now and even higher from that 10 years from now. So that's my perspective looking at dividend stocks over the longer term. So given that perspective, I want to see revenue growth. How are they doing in terms of revenue? And each of these two, you can see cyclical companies, right? The oil industry, oil prices are cyclical. They move up when the economy is doing well and they move down when the economy is doing poorly. And that's understandable, right? When the economy is doing well, more people are working, driving, commuting to work. More people are traveling right? Going on planes and more factories are increasing production, driving economic activity, using energy and more and more activity. So when economies are contracting, that's moving in the opposite direction and it tends to drive oil prices up and down and Chevron and ExxonMobil, they're highly correlated to the price of oil. So you can see their revenue fluctuating over the years. The next thing I wanted to compare these two on is cash flow from operations to sales. The reason I focus more on cash flow with the oil companies is because of a significant sum of non-cash expense in depreciation. And so cash flow from operations I see as a more informative metric for Chevron and ExxonMobil, especially because those large capital investments for growth are largely behind these two oil companies. They're now in the harvest mode from those investments, given that the world is trying to transition away from oil. These two are not investing in growing production all that much, given that trend, right? So they're trying to harvest the investments they've made over previous decades. And Given this metric, the cash flow from operations to sales, a little bit better for Chevron at 18.08% most recently compared to 16.54% with ExxonMobil. But more importantly, when you look back at the last decade, Chevron has consistently beaten ExxonMobil in this metric. Chevron has consistently outperformed ExxonMobil on this metric. Now, looking at their prospects over the next five years, you can see that analysts on Wall Street expect ExxonMobil's earnings per share to decline by 2% per year over the next five years. So they are not optimistic about Exxon's earnings per share forecast for the next five years. Similarly, for Chevron, those prospects are not that much better, but certainly better at 1.9% earnings per share growth for the next five years compared to negative earnings per share growth for ExxonMobil. So neither of these two oil companies are expected to grow earnings per share all that much over the next five years. And that makes them unattractive investments, in my opinion, 
looking at their prospects over the next five years. But you never know. These prospects, these earnings per share estimates were made with a certain oil price in mind. And if oil prices are much higher than they were when these estimates were made, the earnings per share could come in better than expected. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a volatile industry and in volatile industries, it makes it even more difficult to forecast earnings per share over the next several years because you have a wide range of outcomes that are possible instead of a narrow range of outcomes for a company like McDonald's, right? In a good economy or a poor economy, McDonald's does roughly the same, right? But in companies like in industries like oil and in companies like Chevron and ExxonMobil, they're cyclical in nature. So it really depends on how the economy does over the next few years on how they will do and how oil prices fluctuate over the next few years on how they will do. So a more volatile than usual industry to be sure. On valuation and judging by the forward price to earnings ratio, Chevron is slightly less expensive than Exxon trading at a forward price to earnings of 11.03 compared to a forward price to earnings of Exxon at 12.48. So given the forecast, given the metrics that I looked at so far, given that Chevron outperformed Exxon in its cash flow from operations to sales for the last decade, and that Chevron's prospects are better over the next five years, and finally that Chevron is trading at a cheaper valuation, if I was to pick between one of these two today, I would pick Chevron. Chevron would be my choice. Now, I do own ExxonMobil stock that I bought in 2020. Remember when the oil price collapsed and you could buy, you could fill up your tank of gas at roughly $2 a gallon and ExxonMobil stock price fell to around $20 per share? That's when I got ExxonMobil shares and I have a huge capital gain in them. So I'm not going to switch from ExxonMobil to Chevron because Chevron is now the better investment because I would have a huge capital gains tax on that. And the difference is not that large between Chevron or Exxon. But if I had to pick today, I would pick Chevron, even though, like I mentioned, I own Exxon. Now, one thing I will note as well, if you don't already have an oil stock in your portfolio, it could provide some diversification benefits to your total wealth scenario. If you're spending, oh, I don't know, $100, $200 a month on fuel for transportation, and you now own an oil stock, now that gives you some diversification in your total wealth. If, if oil prices go up, your oil stocks are likely to do well, offsetting some of the price you would have to pay at the pump, some of the higher price you would have to pay at the pump. If oil prices were to move lower, your oil stocks would probably decrease in price, but then you would also be paying a lower price at the pump every month. So you kind of get an offsetting impact from those two from owning an oil stock. Now you get most of that benefit just by having one oil stock in your portfolio. So going from one to two doesn't do very much to increase those diversification impacts. So just something to consider if you're evaluating oil stocks for passive income. That's just an added benefit if you don't already own an oil stock in your portfolio and you're spending up upwards of over a hundred dollars a month in fuel fueling up your vehicle thank you for watching this video i truly appreciate it i know there's a lot you could be doing with your time and a lot of other videos you could be watching so i truly appreciate that you chose to watch this one if you want to see more videos just like this hit the subscribe or the like button they'll both help me make more videos just like this one thank you again